the battle of Fimmeridge. In those few moments, I witnessed the birth of a nation. Some battles have decided the fate of nations, for example, um, the, Aus- the Anzacs, shouldn't just say Australians, the Anzacs with the Battle of Gallipoli, the, the Indian Raj units with um, basically the whole war, the South Africans with the um, African campaign and some on the Western Front, but nothing more profound than the Canadians at Vimy Ridge and Passchendaele, also known as the Third Battle of Yeeps. But for right now, we're going to study Vimy Ridge. So, even though Passchendaele was more recognized as the birth of the Canadian nation, this was the beginning of a chain of events that would make Canada a nation would birth Canada as a nation forever. So, at 5.30 on the 9th of April, 1917, the sounds of of whistles filled the air as the 4th Canadian Canadian Division prepared to go over the top to attack Vimy Ridge. For two years, the British and French tried to take the strategic summit in Nord-Pas-de- Calas region of France, but the Germans had made it into an impregnable fortress. And thousands died in vain, but it just took the Canadians a couple of hours, under eight hours to be exact, to take the ridge in 1917. The war was still in a stalemate at this time, and trench warfare was part of everyday life, it was the norm. And games were measured in meters, not even kilometers, and countless of lives. The lowest you could get was a thousand dead for at least one trench taken. And by 1917, several million men had been killed on the Western Front alone. The German defences were tree lines deep and enforced with bunkers, enforced with bunkers and machine guns. The Allies hoped, hoped. The Allies hoped for a breakthrough as they planned the British would attack from Arras and the French south of Arras and catch the Germans in a pincer movement, cutting them off and giving them a decisive victory. It was still a decisive victory mentality even in 1917. The Canadians were part of the British First Army and were under the command of his most excellent, because we're in the fr- we're in the pr- we're in the present, we're in the future. So his excellent Julian Bing. He believed that the British had and had very outdated methods and were struggling for success trenches in World War One. And it strangled the success rate of the British. He took time to listen to his men under his command, which was very rare, if not impossible. Especially, look at Luigi Cadorna. He would literally fly at anyone who opposed him. So Julian Bing, from the start, he listened to his men. He listened to people under him. He even listened. He even listened to the common foot soldier. And in that summer offensive, he was tasked to take Vimy Ridge, which was north of Harass. It looked over the coal fields of Dauphin, and was a key defensive and was a key defensive area as well as an industrial area and he was det- and the Germans were determined to hold on to it they spent two years making it into the most, most impreg- impregnable, impregnable place on the western front but Bing was confident with the right approach he and his Canadians could break the line a simple plan of four divisions would rush up under the heaviest artillery barrage of the war besides the Somme and a couple others. At 5.30 a.m., the 1st Division had only an hour to rush what they call the Black Line, which was the first line of defence, the first line of trenches. And then the 2nd wave would take the Red Line, which was the second line of trenches. The 3rd and the 4th would take the Brown Line. No, the 3rd would take the Brown Line. And the third and fourth would move up together to take out the brown line. 
near the city of Vimy at 7 and 5 a.m. sharp. If everything went to plan, the ridge would be theirs at 1.30, less than 8 hours from when they started at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. It was pretty ambitious and Bing had to make sure his men were specially trained for this task. And in the rear, far from Germanized, the Canadians were training and were taught new skills. But the reason for this was one year ago, around this time period in April, another great catastrophe happened, which was the Somme. It was a huge massacre and Bing, and Bing did not want it. For the sake of his men and for the sake that he only had four divisions so a massacre like that could not happen at this ridge so he sent sir arthur curry to see what had gone wrong and he learnt that many in many places officers were either killed or didn't go up at all and the men were left without objectives and it caused it to grind to a halt and also made and also the most deadliest weapon of this war besides artillery was the German machine gun which was the only gun the only light machine gun to have a hundred rounds compared to the 47 in the Lewis the 20 of the Chateau the I don't even know if the Russians had one but nothing could compare to that light machine gun there were heavy machine guns which were that but it was basically a heavy machine gun mobile so a hundred bullets which could mow down tightly dense tight units into nothingness. So Curry advised Bing to organize his men into what he would call sections, which were 10 men each. And unlike the Somme, these men were trained to move swiftly and independently across the fields and were trained in fire and movement. While one section distracted the Germans, the other would sneak around and overrun the trench but the Canadians needed a machine gun to match well, to match the Germans and they knew just, obviously the Lewis gun because the Hewitt was basically an end war invention so it was the perfect infantry weapon and it made sure that they were and he made sure that one was at least in every section and it also had a defensive role if it had if they had a counter-attack not likely but if they did they would use the Lewis gun as a defensive weapon um, so leading up to the 6th the 9th and 15th of April they were doing small trench raids at night to get a mental map of the battlefield if you will and also kind of rehearse it live in a way and nothing was overlooked in this whole operation unlike the Somme the men knew where to go what to do during the battle before the run-up to the battle Bing told his men I want a disciplined and well-trained pack of hounds to find their own holes through the hedges I'm not gonna tell you where they are and never lose sight of your objective never in the history of the British Army or any army for that matter I could check into it but more than likely not where well, the men were common foot soldiers knew so well what to do and how much responsibility they had after months of preparation training and planning the Canadians were ready for Vimy not quite but almost there almost there their new platoon tactics would have an amazing effect on the course of the battle but they had one more obstacle in front of them before they were truly ready for truly ready for amazing success. Artillery shrapnel were little pieces of fine metal that would explode mid-air, raining hot metal and balls of lead on the men. Bing wanted his men dug in and hidden Bing wanted his artillery men to take out the German machine guns and artillery pieces before the attack could even start but the Germans were dug in and hidden around the woods of Vimy. The Canadians used air recons to scout out the German positions. It was a very dangerous job 
It was a very dangerous job because they were exposed. They were in spotting balloons. But they looked over the field as they mapped out the bunkers and the German machine gun nests and relayed it back to the ground. Also, the creeping barrage were, was perfected. So much so that back again at the Somme, the artillery creeping barrage at that time would sometimes fall short and fall on the same men they were destined to protect. It also did not keep up with the men so it would go over the German lines which they had time to get back up and mow down the British as they came across or it would fall too short hitting the men that they were that it was trying to protect so it had to be timely it had to be perfectly timed timing like I said was key so now they got it the machine gun sections artillery artillery yes reconnaissance yes know where the German machine guns are know where the Germany German artillery is knock them out good know their objectives and know and every man is independent and knows what to do on that fateful day check the Canadians were truly ready to take Vimy Ridge now so that night they slept on the they slept in the tunnels to prevent injuries on like again at the Somme the artillery bombardment like I said would um, fall short and hit the men so just in case that happened too cautious too cautious they would sleep in the dugouts for the night as 525 approached all the men lined up in the trench whistles started blowing it was time to go over the top they knew their objectives they were ready at 5.30 a.m. the arty started as the German front lines went up in blaze as fire and mud leapt up into the air they rushed over to, they rushed over to the German lines as they rehearsed they followed the creeping barrels as they worked their way up the ridge within 30 minutes the first objectives were taken then the second one at 7 o'clock then the third one at about 11 o'clock and finally the fourth and final objective captured at 1.30 in the afternoon as promised they took all the objectives they got onto the hilltop of the ridge and on the other side it was totally untouched by war birds singing trees whistling nothing had happened here it was all quiet on the western front but but we're not done yet we're not done yet there was one last battle to go on one hill four five as they advanced up the hill they were shocked to see the germans ready to defend as they saw they were fighting back they panicked and attacked and the attack grinded to a halt the only reinforcement they had were the nova scotians that were only used to digging trenches and making latrines they were to get another schedule RT but when it didn't arrive the Nova Scotians rushed up the hill of 1945 and they took the hill within one hour and finally the whole ridge was taken it belonged to the Bing it belonged to the sorry it belonged to Bing boys now as they watched the Germans run off into the sunset it didn't provide a major breakthrough but the tactics news there were acknowledged from higher up and from then on senseless slaughter was avoided because the Canadians took Vimy Ridge in less than 8 hours not without cost but they did take it and it proved to the men and generals that the war was winnable again